So just a little bit about Oscar. Oscar is a native of Puerto Rico and has lived in New York since 2010. He began his career with the Natural Resource Conservation Service as a soil conservationist, working out of the Walton Field Office in Delaware County, New York. He's been a resource conservationist in the Millbrook Field Office in Dutchess County, New York since 2013. And Oscar is also a disability access program manager for the Civil Rights Committee of NRCS. New York. He received his BS in horticulture from the University of Puerto Rico. Welcome to the I'm with NRCS New York. I'm Oscar. Um, I'm Diane from the NRCS Planning Group, so we're going to sit back and forth between the other. Diane's going to take the lead first. So. Um, thank you very much, Diane. Their application 
and then a couple times a year we'll go through all the applications we can receive and, and um, some will be funded. Um, some of the partner agencies we work with are Farm Service Agency and they do a lot of the financial um, parts of the farm bill. For example, um, certain types of crop insurance for certain crops that are uh, otherwise not insurable, um, disaster programs, um, milk support, milk pricing support. Rural development is another USDA agency we work with quite a bit, and especially lately on energy programs. One of the big things, at least in Connecticut, is to work with particularly greenhouse growers on uh, doing energy audits and some of the things they might be able to pay through for, for our programs, some through rural development. We try to uh, work with landowners and point them in different directions to different agencies that help them financially. Um, so water conservation districts. Um, back to what I mentioned, the you know, origins in the Dust Bowl days, the so soil water conservation districts are local county level boards that are, are elected normally and those are farmers that represent the area and will connect other farmers to us um, and they will recommend you know, you can work with NRCS, they might help out with some of the planning process. And because they're at a county level, each county district, soil water conservation district can be vastly different um, in terms of funding and um, what their capabilities are. So that really depends on, on where you are. Um, cooperative Extension Services, um, Cornell, UConn, um, each state has its uh, cooperative extension usually through Land Grant University that has quite a bit of information available that is usually is more of a research based um, so they might work on, uh, on experimental plots with people to, to do trials they're usually very good with um, financial planning with farms uh, they will have uh, programs for that especially with new beginning farmers trying to do a business plan and things like that um, land trusts, I know in Connecticut we work with quite a few land trusts um, to do invasive control on their property. Sometimes we'll do things like um, little cottontail habitats, mostly uh, <coughs> with forests and sometimes wetlands restorations. And technical service providers are <coughs> folks who have gone through a training program with us to learn our planning process in their particular specialty, they will be certified to work with landowners. For example, foresters will write a forest management plan that they will submit to us um, and we will pay for some of the funding so that landowners can work with the forester to do their, um, their forestry plan. And then volunteers are very, very helpful to us. Um, there's generally a lot, some opportunities for people to volunteer. They know the agency, and we involve them in all sorts of things, especially with the soil staff. They can always have some sort of little projects going on. Um, to be eligible for, first of all, uh, anybody is eligible for for um, planning assistance. That said, there's a little bit of contingency on our work. So we have to prioritize people who have financial assistance contracts first um, in terms of how much time we can commit to each landowner to do the planning. So if um, someone gives us a call, we can talk through them what their issues are, hopefully we can pay a visit. We might not be able to spend days working with them on planning unless they're going to be involved with um, applying for financial assistance. Um, so to be able, eligible for the financial assistance aspect, they must have control of the land through a deed or long-term lease for the life of the contract, which is usually five years or less. Um, in certain circumstances, it could be as much as 10 years, but those are extremely rare. Because really, if you're thinking 10 years down the road, so many things can change. It's best to, to put those into the long-term plan and make a commitment to the near-term projects you want to do. Um, there is an adjusted gross income 
limitation. So if you're making over $900,000 in uh, adjusted gross income, then hopefully you can pay for your own projects. Uh, so there's that limitation. And um, must be in compliance with the Highway Rural Land and Wetland Provision of the Food Security Act. So basically that was a farm bill back in 1985 when, um, as I discussed, we're, we're based back in the dust bowl days. We have a certain expectation that you're going to be a steward of the land to at least the minimal extent that we set forth. So to be in compliance with the highly affordable land, um, we have certain criteria that we analyze the, you know, the soil on your property. And if it has um, a certain um, erodibility index, that it has a certain tendency to a road, then we will ask you to make sure that you are staying within a certain erosion control measure, so maybe you'll be required to have a cover crop, things like that, that we'll ask you to pay for on your own, to implement on your own, before we can go on top of that and then work with you further. So it's a little bit extra incentive for people to, um, to meet this criteria and say, okay, now I'm going to go to the next step. Um, if your land is not highly erodible, you don't have to worry about that. We'll work with you right away. But we do have to do an analysis of that. And basically, it's, it's usually done in the office or one quick field visit. It's not, we don't have to take soil samples or things like that. And the wetlands provisions, um, basically we're asking you to not drain your wetlands. Um, you know, that's, that's a minimal set of stewardship we expect you to have. Um, in order to start working with us. The nice thing about our agency is we're not regulatory. So if we go out and you've had an oops, um, we're not going to find you. We're just not going to work with you until you remedy it. And we can't work with you to figure out how to remedy it. You're going to have to pay for it on your own. But we can, we can try to help you get back into your um, and we also have special provisions for certain groups of people um, that are called socially disadvantaged, which I think is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's my commentary. Um, so beginning farmers or beginning forestry owners um, and limited resource, so those who have a little bit lower income, um, Indian tribe veterans, we will give that little extra payment for them to help them because we don't pay for everything 100%. We're expecting people to put in a little bit on their own. And we know for, for some groups that's very difficult to be able to get their part in. So this helps to make sure that we can have more people who can participate. Um, and then you can sometimes receive advanced payments. Most of, most of the projects we do, you have to have it done to our certain level of expectation before you can receive payment. Um, for some of these groups, we can give you a little bit of advanced payment to get to buy your seed or to, to pay the contractor for their startup fees. Um, <clears throat> through the Farm Bill, some of our current programs are Agricultural Management Assistance Program, Environmental Quality Assistance Program, uh, Incentive Program, sorry, EQIP, which is our, our big one. Probably 95% of our workload is in the uh, Conservation Stewardship Program, Agriculture Conservation Easement Program, and the EWP Program, which is a periodic one whenever there's an emergency situation, um, generally floods, flood events. Uh, AMA is one that I work with fairly often. It's, uh, it's kind of an interesting program because it's it's based out of a different section of the farm bill that's really associated with risk management. And there's only 10 states in the entire country that are able to participate in this program. And those are states that have a low participation in certain crop insurance programs. So since we don't participate in these crop insurance programs because of the types of crops that are grown here, they get a little extra incentive for managing risk through other things which um, quite often is irrigation. So you're managing your risk by making sure that you have adequate water supplies to take care of your plants when there is not enough rainfall. Um, and 
So some of the pro some of the things we do is um, is certain types of wells, pumps, um, irrigation lines, main lines to hydrants, and then the actual um, the actual dirt lines out in the field. Um, but if you are receiving uh, subsidies through RMA elsewhere, the payments get rolled in. Um, let's ask Oscar talk about so, as Diane said, um, EQIP is one of our main food money main programs. Um, <coughs> our director of production and environmental quality. Um, it's a voluntary program. If participants want to sign up for it, fine. If you don't, don't have to. we're not going to make you do it. Um, we provide through EQIP um, technical and financial assistance and to you know, eligible producers on hand. Um, individual varieties who produce or have an interest in agricultural crop, including forest products or livestock, are eligible. Um, if you own agricultural land and non industrial pack private forest, um, and there must be an actual re uh, research concern that, that we can address for some of our conservation practices. Um, some examples of, of things that we can do, we have the uh, conservation activity plans. Um, for example, I have a farmer, he has a uh, his dairy farm. And he has all these manure and he doesn't know what to do with them or, or he's spreading them in the field. He, he's spreading them more in the fields, however he, he thinks it's appropriate. We can actually pay um, some, one of the TSPs or do it ourselves and have someone take soil tests on the land, figure out what nutrients are, are deficient in that soil, figure out what your nutrient concentration is in your manure, and tell you, you know, you need to spread this much per acre on this field or that field and so on. Um, grazing the same thing, we don't want people to be grazing their lands all the way down to their ground. If the grass not going to grow back, and if you, let's say, if you take it down like one inch or like a lawn, it's going to take longer time for that grass to come up. Um, livestock waste, let's say you have this barnyard and you have all these nice juices going down to the stream, which you don't want to. Um, oh, what did I do here? Okay. Um, we can come up with a plan and, and, and do certain practices um, like a uh, Let's say we can put a barn, uh, a concrete barn near a roof, and at some some part of it, they can scrape all the manure that's in there and provide funding for manure storage. So, we can store manure within six months of the winter if you're not grazing your land. Soil health is, is an initiative that's been it was it used to be broadland allergy to soil health in the last couple of years. Um, they can really. Um, They've been really active and really um, promoted, as I said. Um, like Diane was mentioning, if, if there's some, if you have a field that you're planting in corn for 20 years, it's highly probably. There are fields like that. I've, I've, I've seen it, and they're planting for, they've been planting for for 20 years, and a highly erodible land. You're losing all your soil and nutrients. But what happens here? Okay, well, come up with a plan, you know, you can put cover crops instead of just putting corn for the next 20 years, let's say, put hay for three years and then put corn for two years and so on, in order to actually try to build a hole in soil, which is going to take a lot of time, but eventually you're going to be saving a lot of fertilizer costs, which are really high. Forestry, um, for forestry management plants, we usually ask for a uh, we can fund uh, first storage plants, and that tells you, you know, this is the health of your port, of your food stand. You can do um, forest stand improvement. There's basin here. We can do control. Um, we usually work with the watershed friends back there. Um, we've done. We work with the watershed on some of the uh, storage plants they have. If the participant decides to apply some of the programs to go share some of those practices. Um, air quality, I haven't dealt with much with it. I don't know if you don't 
about a month in the uh, also great. greenhouse purposes. Huh? Greenhouse purposes. Yeah, I haven't talked about it very far. And then there's the organic initiative. Um, your organic producer, you can get, think you get a higher rate for organic, for being organic, or if you're in a transition to be organic, the um, goal of this program is by that by the end of the contract, you have to be an organic producer. So there's certain, certain tracks that we can actually fund in order for them to actually keep going into their organic certification. Can you listen to me back there? Any questions? Uh, so for the conservation activity plans in say forestry, I'm, I'm curious, one, is there a minimum acreage? And assuming there is, is there is there an allowance or or could could potentially uh, partners identify a group of landowners that might be interested, that would be interested in say a similar practice. They would like to have a say collective <laughs> conservation activity plan for their collective backyards, for example, and then be eligible to apply. It, it, anything like that, you know, for say a, a common practice, if the landowner, if these are a group of landowners that together might meet your minimum requirement? They would have to go for like some sort of LLC, right? Yeah, they because they, and then oh, they, really? they would have, yeah, because, okay. Is there a name on the first? I think they're the same. It's not even a bit of a 10-acre minimum. 10-acre minimum? That's good. Okay. Sure. Um, as long as you get those 10 acres, then you're eligible. Then also, the uh, cost of the uh, whatever we're going to pay for that is going gonna, gonna to be different depending on the acreage. The more acres you have, the more money you potentially can get for, for that plant. But like you were saying, there's a group of landowners, you know, they have, let's say, 15 acres of contiguous forest. Ideally, they would have to <coughs> go into the farm service agency or form their LLC before that and tell, you know, this is what we have, this is how many landowners there are. And they would all have to agree on what prices are to be funded or, or what they want to do. So, thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes. All right. So some of the stuff we want to run up. I think there's so well this is a typical barnyard sometimes. Yeah, it's, let's say you have a field, you have a barnyard that feels like 300 feet, but you have a little swale of bare ground and all those wonderful liquids are going down straight to the stream, and that's a problem. Whether you have those 300 feet long field still have that little soil that's directly impacting that stream. Um, that's that's done with your, yeah. This is just, basically it's the same thing as coming out that area uh, is being yard. exacerbated by, in this case, these uh, horses that were, that were um, ripping up the grass and keeping it to the back behind them. So in an armor area. Um, this one was a project that was completed this this fall. It was kind of ugly, but it was just seated down when I was taking the picture. Um, we have a, I think it was 30, 40 acre field. You know, we have the, uh, this is on the 10 mile river. Yeah, all these fields have been eroding in the last couple of years. Um, I think last year, from last, was it 2014 to 2014, it eroded about 20 feet from the uh, stream all the way into the land. So in 2013, they were awarded a uh, contract to actually restore and or, or reinforce that stream back. So what they did was they put a lot of big rocks. But um, it, they have to be certain size. The engineering sign has to meet our standards. And we're out there from time to time inspecting the uh, construction. So by the end of it, um, they probably had, they brought the stream channel back to its original width, and they probably gained about 50 feet of land that was eroded. 
Um, the conservation stewardship program. This is this program. If you are a good stewardship of the land, this program has a list of activities that you can actually implement, and you will get an annual payment for five years. Um, this program, the uh, more acres you have, the more money you get. Um, I had. I have actually, there's a contract, they have 500 acres of, of woods, they're planting three acres of pollinator habitat. And for that they get about $2,000 a year. They probably spend $1,800 a year. It's on the cost of the amount of incentive for them. But the good work they're doing, and they're actually in the for a, to actually have a cap. Uh, um, we have some, and there, there is a, a minimum payment too, so if somebody has small acreage, like I have somebody who's only farming an acre and a half, but what they're doing is meeting the minimum stewardship threshold on their little acre and a half, so um, if you multiply their payment by their acres, it would get something ridiculous like $100. So the minimum payment is $1,000. So if you're moving that threshold, you're getting that $1,000 a year. Another example would be some farmers during the winter, they just feed their livestock in a certain spot. You can get out there, you know, if you mind, if you want to, you know, one of the enhancements is to actually move those feeding areas. Instead of just feeding down one area during the winter, get your hay bill the next one. Just there. So you don't have the same nutrient concentration in the same area. So a conservation system is a luminous? Is that a system? Second line, mm -hmm. system has a system. Where you have to be harvesting. Uh, no, you get to a forest. Forest. Yeah, a little bit. So I have a woodland that's, say, passively managed now. Do I have to actively manage my woodland now? And this is more all about our project, okay? So, <coughs> I, I'm a wood, I'm a, I'm a wood, wood owner, right? Mm -hmm. And they, I went to a seminar and I said, oh, I'd like to manage my woodland. And they said, well, go, go to the NRCS. So I would come to you and I said, I've got 12 acres of woods on my property, which I would like to do I, am I an agricultural producer at that point? If you have the 10 acres, you want to take um, If you have the, the 10 acres and you meet the minimum threshold for the stewardship, and there's a very long questionnaire that we have to go through with you that's um, give you a score. So if you meet that minimum score. Well, what kinds of things do I have to do to meet the minimum score? Um, that's going to depend on your property. So if your property is already in pristine condition, you're, you're going. If you've got invasives, but you're managing them, then you're you're meeting this, this stewardship threshold. Um, but you have to do something, even if even if your <coughs> your property is in great condition already, you have to meet. You have to choose one of the activities off the list. And there's there's quite a few for forestry. It could be um, it could be um, creating habitat by you know standing dead wood, you know things like that. You have to do at least one of these additional add-on items, <coughs> and then that all gets calculated into this this sort of points-based system that gets multiplied on your acres, and then you receive your payment. So the difficult thing about CSP is people come in and ask and say, okay, well, you know, if I go through this whole process, which honestly it takes you know, at least two hours to go through the questionnaire. How much am I going to get in the end? Well, I can tell them is, well, at least $1,000 to meet the price. $500 an hour. So far, I'm doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and the record keeping, you know, you have to keep records for each year. Yeah. <laughs> Does a municipality qualify for these things? You know, says individuals or entities? No. Um, it cannot be public land. It has to be private. And trust land? But I will say, it could be. I take that back. Could be public land if it is leased to a private. And so if a farmer is leasing a town you know, plot, that, that the farmer will be able to. But the public entity would not be able to. But the 
Land Trust. Land Trust, right? Yeah. You're yeah. Okay. Remember, Land Trust, we're going to come out of the program. So, um, any other questions? Yeah. So, uh, we, got, we got a quick grant to do a variety of conservation projects. Uh, one of them is a pollinator meadow, so we're, we're um, installing a two and a half acre pollinator meadow. Could we get CSP funding to actually maintain the meadow on an ongoing basis? Mm -hmm. My understanding is not you're already addressing you're already addressing pollinator habitat through another program. Okay. That would be if, if, if you start rolling to CSP, yeah. then that I would not go with the pollinator habitat practice. If I go with that, then that's a little different, and then that's my fault. So I don't want to. <laughs> if you're addressing, that's the other thing. If you're addressing certain resource concerns on your land through another program, you can't. You're not going to be funded to to do, to do it again. Right? If, if you already have that contract, you're already doing it. But we receive funds to install them, though. There's no funds to maintain them. But I know we have an obligation to maintain it over a certain period of time. So, okay, just ask it. Okay. Well, CSP yeah. operates a little bit differently, so it's paying you for being a good steward. So, you'll get points for having that meadow. Yeah. So, it's it's not it's not the same. You'll have to do something additional. you have to choose something else to do on top of that. But you would sort of get your, your baseline points for having already done that. Right. I'll talk about our CS person. Yeah, it is. Plus, yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, I find some people who are equipped because your payments in CSP are usually fairly minimal if, if you want to do something a little more grandiose and put up some bird boxes. You know. All right. So we're going into the um, agricultural conservation easement program. First off, we have agricultural land easements and pretty much NRCS teams up with the land trust. We land trust and those things align development pipes for agricultural land. NRCS usually puts 50%. We do 50% in New York. Well, okay, possibly. And pretty much the land trust are the ones that have to apply on behalf of the land owner. So they have to apply through NRCS. It's a little complicated. Um, I, I deal with it very minimal. Um, it used to, I don't know if you've heard before, it used to be the uh, FRPP, Farmer National Plant Protection Program. And with the new farm bills, just, they, they're changing all these things. So it's agricultural land easements now. And then we have wetland reserve easements, which is mainly um, to protect, you can protect um, fish and wildlife, um, including threatened and endangered species, which is a lot of what we do in Dutchess County. Um, also, if it's, if it's a farm wetland, you can actually restore it with original condition or, or try to get to that condition with this program. And the uh, producer actually gets payment per acre. In Dutchess County, we're paying, last year we were paying $8,300 per acre. So that's a one-time payment. And it depends if you're enrolling in a current easement or if you're doing a 30 year easement. If you're doing a 30 year easement, you get 75% of that. If you get a permanent easement, then you get the $8,300 per year. And then there's other um, um, practices that are included in that easement that um, we put funding towards. Yeah. Okay, so for the weapon reserve easements, uh, what is the minimum acreage? And then for the ag land easements, the question is, if there's a state program, like in Connecticut, that pays up to, say, a certain <coughs> amount, um, amount per acre, you know, that the state fund has, can that be where the other 50% come from? Or contribute to the other 50%? So the way it works in Connecticut is that um, the, the, applicant, the application will go to the state um, because of the partnership we have set up, and generally people don't even know that that 50% is actually coming from us. They're just going to see that they've worked with the state mostly. 
even if the state pool is a different pot of money? Yes, so, um, hmm. so generally we're going to pay 50% and then the state takes in their oh. other percent. So, you know, you may have, I, I think, you know, it ends up usually being a bid and, you know, whatever it ends up being the price for the property is, is kind of complicated based on uh, assessments and things like that. Okay. And what about the minimum acreage of the wetland reserve? I don't know. I asked that question to my state office um, last week, so I'm kind of waiting. <laughs> I, I have the same question. I know they're calling you know, what's the last answer. I'm like, good question. You have to wind up a little bit. Uh, no, no. Uh, it would be the emergency water type protection program. It takes in whenever there's an emergency. Last time it kicked in, well, no. I know last time was um, that I worked with it. Was during Irene and Lee up in the in the lower county. I was still there, so um, Square County is only kind of suffer a lot there. So Congress comes up and says, "Okay, we pass this amount of dollars go around the way." Then, so good. yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have. Oh, uh, Sandy. Sandy, right? Okay. I think they're still working on it. Um,